Well, for more on that, I'm joined now by Dr. Gadi Taub from the School of Public Policy at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. Thank you for being with us tonight on France 24. Uh, first of all, um, now the killer, uh, it seems, had, had worked in this settlement before. He had been thoroughly vetted by the Israeli security services. Uh, there are implications now, aren't there, for the tens of thousands of Palestinians who have uh, similar work permits. Uh, what would you say about that? Well, I think that we're facing here what uh, some of uh, uh, you are facing in Europe and what we're facing all over the world is that terrorism has become privatized. And it just needs a general anti-Western, or in this case anti-Israeli ideology, and then it sprouts on its own without any infrastructure. So this is very, very hard to control and very, very hard to predict. Uh, the argument is, though, that this is different to the situation in Europe because um, these settlements are on land the Palestinians consider to be uh, their land. They are considered illegal under international law, and they say as long as the settlements exist, the violence will continue. What's your view on that? Well, well you have to understand that the, 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 the word that the, the Palestinians use for settlements means all of Israel, not just the occupied territories. When they say the occupation, they mean the whole of Israel, and they compare us to the Crusaders. And the songs that they teach the, their children are not just about uh, liberating the occupied territories, it's about soaking the uh, land with the blood of the Jews. So we are not talking here about a rational political controversy, but about a much deeper thing, and therefore I think the connection between Hamas and these terrorists and the attacks in Europe are, are, are closer than people think. Secondly, there is a huge misperception of the conflict uh, in Europe. What is keeping the occupation going is not Israel. It is the Palestinians. Uh, Israel has repeatedly offered full-fledged partition uh, suggestions. They have repeatedly been revoked, and not only revoked, they have been rejected uh, on account of not accommodating the right of return. That means that the Palestinians are not going to sign any agreement in which there would be two states for two peoples, but, as Mahmoud Abbas is often saying, two states without saying two peoples, because they demand the right of return of the refugees into Israel, not into Palestine. Now, so there will be two states, but they will both be theirs. This is certainly one of the wider issues that I'd like to get to in a moment. But, but first, um, a, a lot has been made uh, today uh, in the Israeli media um, about the fact that the killer was dependent on so-called uh, martyrs payments to his wife and family from the Palestinian Authority. Are these payments inciting Palestinians to kill? Well, I, I don't know, but there's the fact that the Palestinian Authority is giving uh, social security money to support the families of what they call martyrs and we should properly call terrorists because they target innocent civilians. This sends the message they, th that, that this is something that the Palestinian Authority supports. Now you tell me, why does Europe, who generously uh, uh, finances the Palestinian Authority, not make any uh, um, limits on the way they use the money and say, we will not give you a budget if you give this money to support terrorism, because this is what they do. Uh, just, just briefly, because um, we are running out of time, but the, the U.S. envoy, um, Jason Greenblatt, is preparing to visit uh, the region. Uh, what do you think are the chances of the Trump administration in ending the status quo and getting both sides back to the negotiating table? That is surely the way forward. Well, we, we now have a very right-wing and stubborn government. The Palestinians, like I said, have never budged about the right of return. So there, with the right of return, there is no chance for any deal. The only chance uh, that I see for a deal is if there is an international constellation with other Arab nations, which will force the Palestinians to make reasonable demands and to make a compromise that Israel has agreed to since 1948, and they have never ever agreed that we have a right to a self-determination in their region.